So it's time for part three, finally. I think on this one we'll start with the brackets and the platen. And then I wanna start going over some of the table, the flexures underneath the table. And I actually wanted to cover a couple things that I probably should have uh, brought up in the first video. <laughs> um, you know, this is, I guess technically you could say this is a two by 72 grinder. And I guess I think of two by 72 grinders uh, more as a, almost more of a brand than a measurement. And that's my mistake. If you built this exactly to print, you could fit a 72 inch belt on here. I think if this was all the way in. Problem with that is when it's all the way in, you don't have a lot of adjustment here. You wouldn't be taking advantage of the design of this grinder. Um, so I didn't change the belt size. I think uh, 78 and three quarters is what it ends up being an imperial measurement. And I left it that way because I wanted to have all this range. Now, like I said, you could make this a two by 72 grinder that took only two by 72 inch belts. And I had thought about it a little bit and what you'd have to do is you would have to shorten the body here. Uh, it's, just, it's just too long to accommodate all this movement and a 72 inch belt. All these belts behind me, I got from Combat Abrasives. And I just wanted to show you guys this so you didn't think that the, the belt size for this grinder, on, if you build it to print, is a deal breaker. Combat Abrasive will make them any size in a two inch width that I know of. The only downside, there is a minimum. So I spent $500 on belts the first time, but I got a lot of belts and I can't remember exactly what the minimum is. If, some, if you guys are interested in knowing that, I'll, I'll get the details for you. I have con surface conditioning belts and belts of every grit, ceramic, and they're all available. Now, before you freak out about $500, I know that's a lot of money, but when you break it down per belt, it's actually cheaper than your standard belts. So there it is. Um, if you're wondering why I made this so stupid thick, it's just because this is uh, this is 1018 mild steel, 
And ideally, this should be made out of hardened steel. I know they sell ceramic ones and things like that. You can see with the limited use, uh, it's already taken some damage. I can't really feel it, but it's only a matter of time. And that's why I made it so thick, so I could resurface this on the mill several times as needed. I just got a heat treat oven, and I think in one of my next videos, I'm actually gonna harden a piece for this platen to test it out. So let's go over this table system before we get into building it. Uh, I just wanna show you. So you have your, this slides in and out, this rod right here, and it rotates 360 degrees. Goes in and out, has a lock. And then also this table also pivots on another rod with this piece underneath that the rod goes through. And these flexures are what we're gonna be making in this video. I think this is one of the cooler parts of this grinder. I think Phil Vandalay did a really good job on how this works. It's uh, modular. This is so you can flip it, get more table length when this is horizontal. And here's your other one here. And it's just a really smart idea. They're fairly simple parts to make and it's really versatile. Everything, everything locks in place and you, there's, you basically have infinite adjustment in any direction. So let's make some of them. So the holes I just tapped, those are for these little guys right here. And this is a spring ball nose spring plunger, I believe they're called. And I got it on McMaster car. And there's this little ball and a spring, has quite a bit of pressure on it. So these go in the square parts that we're making and then they thread in. And when the rod's inside, as you turn it, it index into these grooves. Hopefully that makes sense.
So I basically did that four times. I'm not gonna show you guys the footage of every single one, but the process was the same. Started on the mill, drilled the hole, then indicated the bore, bored it out on the lathe with a boring bar, and then used the slitting saw. All right guys, that's it. That's all I can fit in this one. Uh, thanks to the uh, 130 something of you that subscribe. That's cool. You know, honestly, I'm not trying to be YouTube famous. It almost makes it worth it, just the 130. I appreciate it, guys. I'll see you on the next one.